Okay, let's see what we have down here. A lonely man, it seems. That's interesting. Are you here to secure the situation? If by secure you mean shoot every monster I see, sure. I am certain you are having strong feelings. But what has happened here, it is our fault. You understand? I understand that we'll be dead soon. Talk fast. Binary Helix found an egg. It was on a derelict ship, thousands of years drifting. This was Rachni's ship. Inside they find many eggs in cryogenic suspension. They should have destroyed it. Why hatch it? Binary Helix plan to clone Rachni, mass produce them, create an army. But when they get here, they find this egg is not a common Rachni. It is a queen. After she lays eggs, they move her to Rift Station. They are thinking that without her, they can raise the babies to be obedient. So, are they monogendered? Hold on. Don't you need a male to get eggs? Queens are born carrying the genetic code of their fathers. Eggs are carried away from the colony to hatch alone. Queens can lay eggs in hours and have a colony in days. This is how they spread so quickly. Seriously, this is just like in fucking Alien. One queen, many, many eggs. And people who get fucked. Separating them from their mother didn't work. Ah, this was exactly the wrong thing to do. I am thinking that without a queen, Rachni do not develop properly. Her mind is shaping theirs. These Rachni are uncontrollable. Are you telling me I shouldn't kill these things? Uh, actually, I was to tell you the opposite. These Rachni are beyond saving. It is a sad thing, but they must be euthanized. I am thinking that the Neutron Purge must be set off. I'm not familiar with the Purge system. It creates bursts of Neutron radiation. Kills everything within the station. Things beyond get genetic damage of varying degree. I don't have time for this. If the Matriarch isn't here, we're leaving. Uh, I do not want so much to be here myself. But the Mira system, she will not let you leave. Is failsafe, you understand? You leave without arranging to eliminate Rachni, maybe they spread. What? What the hell just happened? I just killed the Matriarch, what the fuck? I am feeling not so well. How do we set off the purge? Arming controls are nearby. All you do is insert the key. Then uh, I will give Mira destruct. Uh, uh. I smell trouble. Look at the furniture go. Woo. That's nice. Connecting. I have full access to the facility and am at your disposal. Activate the neutron purge. I'm sorry, but I can't do that without proper code authorization. Of course I have the fucking code. Code input 8750200079. Code Omega local execution. Verify. Code Omega execution in 120 seconds. Uh, this is bad. Now it gets fun.
that all clear. Oh, I hope the elevator doesn't bug out on me. Puke! Well, now that that's taken care of. What's our next move, Commander? Head for the Mew Relay? The Mew Relay could link to dozens of systems. Unless we know exactly where Saren's going, we'd just be wasting our time. The Commander is right. We cannot rush off blind. We still need to learn more about Saren. Who put you in charge? Did the Commander resign when I wasn't looking? Oh, uh, Ashley. I won't be a puppet for the Asari. I give the orders around here, understood? Forgive me, Commander. I was only trying to help. Crew, dismissed. Novaria report is away, Commander. You want me to patch it through to the Council? Oh, yes. Patch him through, Joker. Setting up the link now, Commander. Commander, do not cut me off like last time. I failed to find it amusing. Save the sermon. I'm just here to follow up on my report. Is this report accurate, Commander? You found Rachni on Novaria? And then release the Queen. Do you have any idea what you've done? How many generations until they overrun the galaxy? Uh, three? Now four. This is no joke, Commander. The Rachni were one of the greatest threats the galaxy ever faced. Whoops. And we're out. Whoopsie. <laughs> uh. <laughs> nice. Totally worth it. Totally worth it. Well, I guess it's that time again. More crew conversations. <laughs> we should start with our blue love interest. Because, you know, priorities, right? If you are here to talk about Benezia's death, you need not bother. She brought it upon herself. She's gone, you can't change that. She was gone long before she died on Noveria. Benezia was a good person once, before she fell under Sovereign's power. Part of me blames Saren for her death. Part of me wants to blame her. And part of me just misses her. I blame Saren, and if I were you, I'd want revenge. We have enough reason to stop Saren. I do not need to add revenge to the list. Benezia chose her path, just as I have chosen mine. I am with you until the end, Shepard. I like talking with you, Liara. No matter what the subject. You have been very understanding with me, Shepard. Very patient. I appreciate that. I know there are some strange beliefs about my people. I am familiar with the legend of Asari promiscuity. But those rumors have little basis in fact. When one of my people joins with an individual from another species, it is a very deep and spiritual exchange. We do not enter lightly into a union. You Asari can live for a thousand years. What happens when your partner grows old and dies? Some unions are a single encounter between two willing individuals, but there are cases where an Asari and her partner choose to remain together. When that happens, we do not focus on the inevitable loss. Instead, we enjoy the time we are given. And even after a partner has passed on, a part of them lives on in us. The union is a connection that transcends both time and space. You make it sound almost mystical. 
A true union goes far beyond an ordinary melding. It is a connection that transcends the physical universe. Two become one. Thoughts and senses merge, identities intertwine. Memories and emotions weave themselves together, becoming entangled in a single, rapturous whole. It is unlike any other experience. In some cases, it can be a truly life-changing event. Sounds weird. It sounds amazing. Are you saying... No! Oh no! Uh, I am not very good at this, am I? I'm sorry, Shepard. I am trying to explain why I have been so... reserved. The Union is more than just sex. It is the lifeblood of my species, the way we Asari evolve and grow as a society. That is why I have never... Uh, I mean, that is why we must choose our partners with great care. I want you to be absolutely sure about this, Liara. I am only 106, barely an adult by Asari standards, and I spend most of my time absorbed in my research. I never really thought about it, not until I met you. You are very special to me, Shepard. But with all that's happened, Saren, the Geth, the Reapers, I do not know if we are ready for this. These are dark times, Liara. Maybe once all this is over. I'm glad you understand, Shepard. There is too much at stake. We need to put aside our personal feelings and focus on stopping Saren. I wish it did not have to be that way. But we all have to make sacrifices. Let's let's talk about something else. Well, I would have preferred the sexy time right now, but you know. I'd like to know more about the Asari. We were the first species to discover the Citadel. We were instrumental in forming the Council, and we always strive to be the voice of peaceful cooperation in galactic disputes. My people believe we are all part of a single galactic community. Each species contributes something to the greater whole. Although we seek to understand other species, it seems few of them seek to understand us. The galaxy is filled with rumors and misinformation about my people. Like what? Most of the inaccuracies are centered around our mating rituals. My species is monogendered. Male and female have no real meaning for us. We still require a partner to reproduce. This second parent, however, may be of any species and any gender. Uh, uh. I don't understand. Your species can mate with anyone? Mating is not quite the proper term, not as you understand it. Physical contact may or may not be involved, but it is not an essential element of the Union. The true connection is mental. Our physiology allows us to meld with other beings. We can touch the very depths of their minds. We explore the genetic memory of their species. We share the most basic elements of their individual and racial identities. We then pass these traits onto our daughters. It is how we learn to grow as a species and how we develop a greater understanding of other races. What happens to your partner after the union? Every relationship is different. Some unions are a single encounter with both parents parting ways afterwards. Others can be more long term. Sometimes an Asari and her partner will stay together for many decades. Who was your f mother, father, both? Do you know who Matriarch Benezia chose as her partner? She rarely spoke of her partner. Though I know my father, if you want to use that term, was another Asari. I thought you always needed another species to serve as one of the parents. Think about it, Shepard. If we were not able to mate with our own species, we would have died out long before we ever mastered spaceflight and left our homeworld. Union with our own kind is no longer common, not for the purposes of reproduction. Most Asari believe it weakens our species. Asari daughters inherit racial traits from the father species. If both parents are Asari, then nothing has been gained, or so conventional wisdom would hold. I am what is sometimes called a pureblood. Though no Asari would ever be cruel enough to say the word to my face, it is a great insult among my people. It is possible Benezia's partner was embarrassed by their union. She may have been too ashamed to publicly acknowledge me as her offspring. Why agree to the union if she didn't want any children? I cannot answer that. 
This is all speculation on my part. It is possible she wanted to be part of my life, but something happened to her before she had the chance. Benezia never spoke of her partner. Whatever happened, it caused her too much pain to dwell on it. She raised me by herself, though that is not uncommon. Many Asari raise their children alone, particularly if the father species is short-lived. Often the partner will pass on long before the child reaches maturity. Right. All right, then. I should go. Goodbye, Shepard. I should go. Yep, he said it. She said it. He said it. I said it. Wait, what? Anything you need, Commander? What's your opinion on the last mission? Killing Saren's, uh, what was Benezi anyway? Second in command? Advisor? Anyway, it should set him back a bit. I'm sure Dr. Tassoni's hurting, though. Poor kid, having to kill her own mom. Any opinion on the rack knife? Off the record? If we had the option, I'd as soon have left it to the Council. We weren't out here during the rack knife war. I'm not sure we have any business getting involved. Just trying to get a sense of where the crew's at. Thoughts? Well, they know about the stonewalling you've had from the council. Those communications are classified, Lieutenant. Yes, ma'am. But you know the Navy grapevine. They're on your side. They're pissed about the resistance we're getting, especially from our side. I'll have a better handle on all of it when my head stops hurting. Other elves who flare up. You ever thought about going back under the knife? Maybe get an upgrade? No thanks, Commander. One slip and you can't remember your own name. The L2s spike higher anyway. My abilities would drop with pain-free L3s. That'd be a cold day before I turn myself over to a Kinetic subsidiary. You distrust them that much? You know the records about the biotic training out on Jump Zero? They're all classified. Because the Alliance made mistakes. After first contact, Kinetics was set up to track Element Zero exposures and develop implants for humans. Once we had an embassy on the Citadel, Kinetics could bring in experts instead of taking it slow. The only experts would have to be aliens. Dead on. Turians, actually. That's why Kinetics kept it a secret. They were afraid of what people back home would think, asking the Turians for help when we just fought a war with them. And the Asari would have been more acceptable than the Turians. Yes, but the company didn't go through the Citadel. It would have made Earth look weak, so they discreetly hired some Turian mercenaries. I agree, Asari would have been better. You could have had sexy time with them also. Get your knuckles wrapped a few times, Lieutenant? Yeah, you could say that. Our instructor was a Turian by the name of Commander Vernus. A real hard ass. He basically had a free pass to break us if it would turn out a decent biotic. Kind of spiraled from there, Commander. Sounds like a classic drill instructor to me. The ones at the Makapa boot camp were brutal. Vernus didn't just push us because it was effective training. He liked it. Anyway, this is ancient stuff. I walked it off a long time ago. I should get back to my duties, Commander. We're here to make history, not rehash it. We'll talk another time, Lieutenant. Commander. Fair enough. been with CSEC a while. Have you seen much action? Well, not as much as you, but yeah, I've seen some interesting things. I bet you have. Anything in particular that stands out? I remember this Solarian geneticist I was sent to investigate. That case was a bit disturbing. What happened? Why were you investigating him? I was tasked with tracking black market trade on the Citadel. Most of it harmless, nothing I needed to pursue. But during the course of my investigation, I noticed an increase in the trade of body parts. Organs, mostly. We usually get a few of those, but not the numbers I was seeing. We weren't sure if there was a new black market lab, or if some freak was harvesting organs from citizens. You've seen this before on the Citadel? 
Every so often, some lab sells unwanted parts through the black market. But they're not as bad as the psychos. I remember this one Elcor diplomat we caught in my first year on the job. He was hacking people up and selling their organs. Had the station in a bit of a panic. But this case wasn't that clear-cut. Turns out, there was more going on than we first realized. So how did you figure out what was happening? First, we got a hold of a sample and ran DNA tests. The weird thing was, the match led us to a Turian who was still alive and was very convinced he'd never lost his liver. After a bit of digging, I discovered this Turian worked briefly for Dr. Salion, the geneticist. So I went to his lab hoping to find evidence of cloned organ development, but there was nothing. No Salarian hearts, no Turian livers, not one Krogan testicle. <laughs> Krogan balls, balls. <laughs> You're kidding, right? Why would anyone want Krogan testicles? Some Krogan believe that testicle transplants can increase their virility, counteract the effects of the genophage. It doesn't work, but that doesn't stop them from buying. They'll pay up to 10,000 credits each. That's 40,000 for a full set. Somebody's making a killing out there. What'd you do about the geneticist? I brought in some of his employees for interrogation to see if I could get them to talk. While I was interviewing one of them, I came across something suspicious. Good thinking. Lackeys are always easier to scare. Exactly. Though in this case it paid off in a different way. One of my detainees started bleeding profusely during the interview. We offered to patch him up and he got frantic, freaked out. I ordered a full exam to find out what was going on. Our medics found incisions all over his body, some of them fresh. That was our big break. These people weren't just Dr. Salion's employees. They were test tubes, walking, living test tubes. So he was growing spare parts in his own employees? Exactly. He cloned their organs right inside their own bodies. Then he harvested them and sold them off. Most of the victims were poor. Pay them each a small percentage of the sales, but only if the organs were good. Sometimes an organ wouldn't grow properly, so he'd just leave it in them. Most of them were a mess, but only on the inside, hidden, so nobody could see it. Actually, <laughs> that actually sounds like the doctors in Romania here. <laughs> I hope he got what he deserved. That's the worst part. We never caught him. Why not? What the hell happened? He ran, blew his lab, grabbed some of his employees, and headed for the nearest space dock. By the time I found out, his ship was already leaving. He threatened to kill his hostages if we tried to stop him. But you went after him anyway, right? I ordered Citadel Defense to shoot him down, but CSEC headquarters countermanded my order. They were worried about the hostages, worried about civilian casualties if the ship was destroyed so close to the Citadel. I told them those hostages were dead anyway. He just used them to make more organs, but they wouldn't listen. Idiots. No wonder you hated it there. Those idiots just let him fly away. Yes, they did. I went to Palin and told him what I thought of him and his policies. He said if I didn't like it, I could quit. Well, I almost did. All they had to do was disable that ship, stop him from running. Maybe the hostages die, maybe they don't, but at least we stopped the bastard responsible for it all. A few casualties is a small price to pay to stop someone like that. Yeah, exactly. I mean, those hostages might be wishing they died by now anyway. Just wish I could have stopped him. That's all. Do you have any idea what happened to Dr. Salian? I sent out feelers from time to time, hoping to find something. I thought I'd found him a while back. He changed ships and changed his name to Dr. Hart. His idea of a joke, I guess. I told the military, but they weren't convinced it was him. I got the transponder frequency for his new ship, but I just can't get anyone to check it out. Well, of course I'll check it out. Extra mission. I'll check out the coordinates when I get a chance. I was hoping you'd say that. But Commander, take me with you when you go. If it's Salion, I want to be there when you find him. Sure thing. Sure thing. Oh, here we go. Ashley and her fucking complaining again. Commander? What's your opinion of the last mission? You mean the Rachni, right? They were dangerous, Commander. They proved that 2,000 years ago. I think it was a mistake to let them go. But that wasn't my call to make. It was yours. You know, 
You really should talk to Chisoni about her mom. She has to be hurting. Just saying, Commander. I already have. Do you have a few minutes to talk? One on one? Sure. I was just watching some mail from home. Oh, before I go, we saw Caden in a news vid about the Normandy. He's cute. Later, sis. <laughs> Let's pretend this never happened. Are you interested in the Lieutenant Chief? Fraternization is against regulations, ma'am. Don't ask, don't tell. What's up? You didn't come by to eavesdrop on family mail. Chief, should you be that casual with your commanding officer? Sorry, Commander. Too much in the family mindset. My sisters and I have always been close. With Dad on duty so much, I had to help Mom raise them. Next, you'll tell me you all ran across green fields singing show tunes. Don't knock show tunes. I might have to take exception. Things were tense between Sarah and me for a while. Then we bonded. Sounds like your father wasn't around much. Wasn't your family stationed near him? Dad always wanted to serve in space, but he wanted us to have real ground under our feet. He'd say, space is beautiful, but you can't raise a family there. I cannot rest from travel. I will drink life to the lees. All times I've enjoyed greatly have suffered greatly, both with those that loved me and alone. For always roaming with a hungry heart, much have I seen and known. Cities of men and manners, climates, councils, governments. Born. <laughs> Poetry. You gonna bore the enemy to death, Marine? Dad, it'll work on Geth, but I'll give it a shot. Just like to remember why we fight. Ulysses was my dad's favorite poem. Every time he shipped out, he recorded me reading it. He had a dozen versions when he retired. Does he still like it? I sure hope so. I read it to his grave every time I go home. Dad passed on a few years back. He's probably still watching, though. He's not a zombie, is he? You know, from heaven. Wherever that is. That's not a problem with you, is it? That I believe in God? Oh, shit. This is tricky. You start preaching in the CIC, we'll have a problem. Commander, I'm not some kind of zealot. I believe in God. What everyone else believes is their business. I should get back to my duties. Didn't mean to take up so much of your time. Dismissed, Chief. Ma'am. Roy. One more and we're done. Stay with me. Shepard, I'm glad you're here. Why are you so cheerful? I'm sleeping much better now. I guess I'm getting used to how quiet your ship is. I still think a lot about my pilgrimage, though. I know Theron's our top priority, but with all the worlds we go to, I was hoping to find something to bring back to the flotilla. What are you hoping to find? Usually, people bring back something like a derelict ship we can use for salvage. But I need something bigger. There's a lot expected of me. What's so special about you? It's my father. He's the senior member of the Admiralty Board. He's one of only five people who can overrule the decisions of the Conclave for the good of the migrant fleet. My father is responsible for the lives of 17 million people. Our entire race is in his hands, and I'm his only child. Of course you are. So are you some kind of heir to the Quarian throne or something? No, it doesn't work that way. My father's position isn't hereditary. I'll probably never serve on the Admiralty Board myself. Officially, I'm just the same as any other citizen. But it doesn't work that way in practice. People have always treated me differently because of who my father is. You must get all kinds of special privileges. I probably had it easier than most growing up. But it's not all good. People like my father have enemies, and they're not above using me to get to him. Why didn't you tell me this before? I guess I'm just tired of people judging me because of who my father is. Everyone's waiting for me to do something great on my pilgrimage. Something that will forever change our lives for the better. If I don't, it's like I failed, and that reflects badly on both me and my father. What would you need to bring back to make everyone happy? Something that would help us better understand the Geth. 
They've changed significantly since the exile. They've continued to evolve. We've done our best to study them, but it's not easy. They're very reclusive. Until recently, they never went beyond the borders of the Vale. And all the Geth we run into now are under Saren's control. We'd need to find Geth operating on their own, independently. But I don't want this to get in the way of our mission, Shepard. First we stop Saren, then I'll worry about my own problems. Yeah, well, you know... I should go. See you later. I should go. Okay. Alrighty then. We're finally done. Oh. The crew conversations. I think we're off to do some side missions now. <laughs>